Hi, welcome back to the workshop where we're continuing with the Firebird build and also, back by popular demand, a special guest appearance from Load of the Dog. <laughs> she has very bad table manners. Okay, so in the last episode we got the grain filling done and I also added a bit of colour into that grain filler. And a couple of people commented on the colour that it's actually changed the body to. Mostly people liked it. A couple of people said they didn't like it and that's fair enough it's it's totally subjective i think it's worth pointing out that i don't think the color that i put into the grain filler really affected the color of the the body wood that much i think it definitely has where it's gone into the grain in the timber but i think most of the color got wiped off so i don't think it's actually stained the wood that much but what it has done because this had linseed oil and lacquer in it's kind of put a coating on the wood and it's changed the color as it would have done if i'd just sprayed it with straight cellulose lacquer that would have made it a darker color pretty similar to this so that kind of gets that out of the way as far as i'm concerned i really like it i think it was far too pale before and i think with the finish i've got in mind this is going to look absolutely spot on it is also worth noting that the sapili that i used in the center block glue up is significantly darker than the two bits of mahogany for the wings again i don't mind that too much it needs to be borne in mind that this is just the bare body once we get the bling on it it's going to look totally different again in terms of the way that the grain fill has performed it's done brilliantly the acid test will be when we spray it to see whether it has actually filled the grain as we would want it to but in terms of performance so far it appears to have filled the grain it's given the whole thing a lovely smooth feel and finish and that linseed oil and lacquer in it has kind of given it a sort of a sanding sealer effect on there so before we actually get around to spraying it i just need to kind of rub it down very lightly with say probably some 400 grit and then we'll be ready to go but yeah i'm really really happy with it it also saved me a ton of work my old technique of using drywall mud that I scrape all over it, let it dry, then sand it off. You're probably looking at about an hour and a half of sanding to get that back to the finish you want. I would say I grain filled this entire guitar in less than an hour. That's mixing it up, applying it, wiping the excess off, and then giving it that kind of buff with a rag afterwards. And it's given me a really, really nice base for my spraying. Like I said, I will need to do kind of five minutes of sanding with a 400 pad just to get it ready to spray but i think i've saved a bunch of time and got a much better finish okay with that out of the way we'll move on to the business of the day and go up the other end to the headstock and start looking at the options for grain filling that so if you remember back to last week i said that i didn't want to use the same stuff on the headstock so i didn't want to lose this kind of figure that is in the headstock faceplate i tried super glue as a grain filler and as you can see it was horrible so we're not going with that I was gonna try some epoxy, but I didn't get time to do it if I'm totally, totally honest. But I had a package arrive today and I have actually got this stuff, which is Aquacoat Clear Wood Grain Filler. It's ready to use, fast drying, easy clean. It's water-based, so it's all environmentally friendly and everything, but I will ruin that as soon as I start spraying nitro about the place. And I've done a little sample on this board and it's not a particularly well prepared board, but you can see that it has kind of filled the grain, but we haven't lost the figure in the wood. So I'm happy to go with this now. And it seems fairly straightforward. Basically the instructions say you apply it with a plastic scraper or similar, apply it across the grain, take off the excess, leave it to dry for 30 to 45 minutes, give it a quick nib down with a 320 pad, repeat, two or three applications and Bob's your auntie Gladys's living lover. So I'm gonna just have a go. I'm gonna use it quite sparingly because it wasn't particularly cheap. The 500 gram tub that I got was 30 pounds and I'm hoping it's gonna have a long shelf life and that I can use all of it instead of three quarters of the tub drying out, but we will see. But already, Putting that on. Makes a huge difference to the look of the headstock veneer. 
think that probably looks a lot nearer. The look that we want when it's got some finish on it. I'm trying my best to get it out of the tuner holes. And it is actually quite warm here today. It's probably about 25 degrees in the shed. So it is drying out quite quickly. And you can actually see that's drying out before our very eyes. So I'll give that 20 minutes to fully dry and then we can give it a little nib off and go for the second coat. Okay, that's had plenty of time now and it feels good and dry to the touch. So I've just got a 320 pad and I'm just going to a bit of light sand off. Okay, and that kind of still looks really, really nice. Still got the grain visible, which is my main concern. So with that done, I'm just going to apply second coat. Trying to avoid getting loads in the tuner holes this time by just applying it with my finger. And again, we'll give that 20 minutes to dry off and hopefully give it its third and last coat. Okay, so this second coat is dry, so it's just a case of repeating that procedure and putting the third coat on. Okay, so that's the third coat on. I'm not gonna leave this one 20, 25 minutes to dry off. It's getting quite late in the evening. So I'm actually gonna leave this to dry overnight and see what it looks like in the morning. But so far, so good. You can physically see just by looking at it that there is a lot smoother surface on it and all of those big voids caused by the grain in the Wenge are pretty much filled up. So yeah, happy days. Okay, and that's all rubbed down. I did actually have a request for another appearance from Lola, but I've, I've had to bribe her to come in, um, if I'm totally honest. She might not be the most obedient dog in the world, but she does love a crisp. <laughs> she has very bad table manners. <laughs> good, girl, good girl. So yeah, so that's now had three coats of the grain filler and it doesn't really show up in the image too well, but it is totally totally smooth and if you kind of get it in the light you can't see any of the telltale little shiny spots that would indicate that the grain isn't properly filled at the end of the day it's not 100 percent massively important that every single little bit of it is to a certain extent you will fill that with the lacquer and it'll shrink back and you have to flat it and polish it that's part of the game so if there were a few low spots i wouldn't be particularly bothered but to be honest it all looks absolutely amazing. So if you are in the market for some clear grain filler, um, Aquacoat would get my recommendation. Apparently you can get it in different colors as well, but you can also tint this stuff. So 
if you're perhaps wanting to do two or three projects out of this tub you can just kind of take a bit out of the tub and tint it with some water-based dye and use that as you would any other grain filler so yeah I'm happy with the results I've got from that and realistically that puts us in the position where we've got not much else to do but to get this into lacquer however I've got a bunch of preparation work to do in the workshop before we can get to that stage so I'll leave this one here and I'll be back in a few days time but as always until then like if you've liked subscribe if you haven't already done so and I'll look forward to seeing you next time thanks a lot for watching Bye-bye.